I guess I should start this video. Yeah, that's just like the perfect opening to that album that I figure a video on this album, let's start with that too, right? This is one of the many samples used in the album Cross by Justice from 2007. This album is absolutely incredible. There are three main sample techniques used, some incredible synth sounds, but there's one other big secret that's the real magic of this album and why it's such a classic that's gotten only better with age. Now, officially, there are three sample credits to this album. Only three. But unofficially, there are hundreds of micro samples throughout. This sample that I'm playing with, this is the Godzilla theme, and it's been chopped up and repitched a little bit. On the actual album, it's layered with timpani and other effects. But if that sound sounds familiar, well, that same song, here's the original. The same song was sampled by Pharaoh Manch for the song Simon Says. <laughs> But Justice has taken this and chopped it in the intro of Genesis, the opening track from their debut album from 2007, Cross. Now, that sample is easier to hear, even if you don't know the Godzilla theme. You might know Simon Says, which will lead you to the same sample. But other samples are hidden in there and very difficult to place. Samples like In the Club by 50 Cent. Isolate just the snare, pitch it up, and here's Genesis. You hear it layered in there? But how could you possibly know that that's what that is? Well, in this case, Justice member Xavier Derane said so. Say we use the In The Club hand clap, not even 50 Cent would notice. But if you listen to Genesis, the first track, there are samples of Slipknot, Queen, and 50 Cent. But they are such short samples that no one can recognize them. The ones from Slipknot, for example, are just tiny bits of the voice. Now, I want to be clear, I'm not going to name every sample used on this album, partially because there's a lot more to this album that I want to talk about, but also because most of the samples still are not known. The duo has said they sampled over 400 records for this album, and only a handful have been found in the years since, and even still, I'm skeptical of some of them. This album is mostly instrumental, but manages to just grab your attention and never let you turn away until the album is complete. Part of that is the songwriting and production, and part of that is the sequencing of the album. Like, one moment you're listening to Genesis, the opening track, and the next, you're on the next one, Let There Be Light. But it's so seamless, there's not a hard line dividing these songs throughout. Each song still works well on its own, but when it's played together, it's an incredible, uniform experience. So I said there are three types of sampling techniques used on this album. I'm pulling this idea from an interview the duo did with Attack Magazine, where they broke this down. As Derane explained, in terms of sampling, our inspirations are divided into three categories. And I'm gonna go out of order here, let's see. Uh, uh, the third category, representing about 90% of what we did on the first album, is micro-sampling. We'll come back to the other two, but let's keep talking about micro-sampling, specifically with the next song, D-A-N-C. If you only know one song by Justice, this is it. It was a huge hit for them with its poppy, electronic drive and kids choir, all mixed together with references to Michael Jackson like PYT, ABC, Black or White, and more. There are tons of samples in this song, starting with the obvious interpolation of Me Against the Music by Britney Spears and Madonna. There are also samples like the song Sunny by Boney M. Listen for the strings here. Just this. Now listen for that. This right here. Let's take this original sample, pitch it, and here's just this. 
That's one little part of the strings that sounds like it's sampled, but the rest of that sample is not the same. That's where the microchopping comes into play. To keep going with the quote from earlier, Derane said, This applies to D-A-N-C-E, which has no big sample, nothing that can be easily identified from another record. For example, the guitar is one note sampled from a record and used so that it works with the music. After we wrote the bass line, we also sampled every single note of the bass from other records and did the same with the strings. If a part needed F sharp played on a violin, we would find this on a record and insert it in the right place and do this for every note that we needed on a violin or other stringed instrument. In another interview with the other member of Justice, Gaspar Ogi explained, We compose everything, replace individual parts, detune them, and so on. The strings, for example, are chords we played and then replaced the MIDI with individual string samples. That's how the chord stabs ended up on the new single. This song, D-A-N-C-E, took the duo four or five months to create. That's because of this micro-sampling technique. They're starting by writing a song, then replacing everything with samples. This is an incredible way to make an album, especially considering it's not just samples. There are drum machines and crazy synths, a ton of compression and distortion on this album, all mixed with micro samples that would be impossible to spot. Like the three notes in a string chord could be three samples from three different records. Like that would be impossible to pick apart. It doesn't even sound like samples. It just sounds like in-your-face disco rock electro opera. More on that in a minute, by the way, because there's one other element that is the real reason why this album has gotten better and better. But let's move on to the next song, New Jack, to talk about another sampling technique Justice used on this album. Actually, before we do, we're talking about sampling individual string parts. So if you're looking for records to sample in your own productions, you gotta check out Tracklib. They're sponsoring this video, so let me show you how it works. Tracklib is an online record store specifically for sampling. They've got a huge catalog, over 100,000 songs and multi-tracks. There's a 100% guarantee of fast, easy clearance, and they recently announced they're officially dropping sample clearance fees. So if you subscribe to Tracklib, you can clear samples without paying anything more. All right, I'm gonna search for disco and see what they got. Now, what's interesting here is we got every little beat of my heart, take one, plus 21 multi-tracks. Now, I'm looking for strings, so here we go. Let's see. Violin one. Yep. Got some pizzicato in there. And what's cool is before you use credits to download this, you can get sort of a preview of what you might wanna do with it. So check it out. I'm gonna loop that pizzicato part, and then in the browser, Let's pitch it a little bit. Uh-oh. What's the cello doing, though? I'm gonna add this to my Digging the Greats playlist on Tracklib. I'm gonna download this and start messing around with it, too. To get started for yourself, click the link in the description. You'll get a free trial and credits to get you started. Let's pull up that quote from the beginning again. In terms of sampling, our inspirations are divided into three categories. The first is the one where we hear something on a record and think, okay, that's great. Let's take a big part of it and just loop it. That's what we did on Phantom, Stress, and New Jack. This song has one of the three officially cleared samples, You Make Me Wanna Wiggle by The Brothers Johnson from 1980. wiggling right now. The original is funky and feels great, but Justice is chopping it up like crazy. It's still recognizable as You Make Me Wanna Wiggle. But the individual sample chops to get from point A to point B are crazy. Check this out. All right, so they would not have done this manually live, but let's see if I can do it. There's another sample that's been identified in here, this one. 
And this is the key to understanding how this album was made. This sample can be heard on New Jack, played with, pitched around a little bit. And what that sample is, it's called Computer Data 3, and it's from the Apple iLife 2006 suite. Do you remember iLife? That was the suite of Apple applications that were a separate purchase, but included apps like iPhoto, iMovie, and most relevant to our purposes here today, GarageBand. This is from the Apple press release for the iLife 2006 announcement. In addition to being the best way to make music on a computer, GarageBand 3 is now also a complete solution for creating professional quality podcasts. Voices can be easily recorded through the built-in expertise of an audio engineer, and podcasts can be enhanced with radio-style sound effects and music jingles, chapter artwork and URL links. Oh, you can just enhance your podcast. Oh, that's cool. Just drop in some little sound effects. Or you can take those sound effects and sample them into your music and make unbelievable music. This album was made not with insane gear in a world-class recording studio, it was made on a combination of Cubase and GarageBand. The sampling madness continues on the next song, Phantom, and Tracklib recently released a video recreating this, and the visual alone shows you the genius of what Justice has done. This sample continues on to the next song, Phantom Part 2, which is a seamless transition. I want to highlight one thing on Phantom Part 2 as well. You've got this compressed slap bass sound. This is, by the way, either MIDI slap bass that's super compressed or samples. It's not the real thing, but it's so compressed. It's got some distortion on it. There's also synth bass in here layered all together. This is imperfect stem isolation, but I want you to notice the bass part. Here's that same section, but here's the strings that are on top of that. But you put them together and it's magic. This is because they're employing an age old technique called counterpoint. All right, I don't know how old age old means, but counterpoint became a very popular thing in European classical music, specifically during the Baroque period. Now, if you don't know what that means, we're talking composers like Vivaldi, Handel, and the big one is, come on, it always comes back to this guy, Johann Sebastian Bach. This counterpoint technique, all it means is that there's a melody, but instead of that being your only line, You've also got a counter melody that isn't quite the same, but moves around in conjunction with the main melody. This technique is used all over this album, but maybe the strongest example is on the next song, Valentine. This is all very Baroque and all part of the plan from the beginning. Justice conceived of this album as a quote, opera disco album. And once you know that, it all starts to make sense. Sure, there's parts that sound like rock where you got thumping dance heavy drums, but then funky slap bass lines and soaring strings that are reminiscent of disco combined with some really great melodic writing and counter melodies, combined with the fact that this album is essentially all one continuous flow of music. It feels very operatic at times. 
Remember that quote from the beginning about three different types of sampling? We had longer samples, micro samples, and the final one, the second one they mentioned in the quote is, the second category contains songs we have been listening to all year and all our lives, and which we don't actually sample. Instead, we mentally sample them by adding bits that sound similar. And while we are sometimes aware of doing this, at other times we only realize it months or years later. So that last method of sampling isn't sampling at all, it's inspiration from all other kinds of music, like Baroque music, which plays into the larger disco theme on this album, and also beyond this album. As Boji explained, Cross was a disco record, and we're still doing disco, but not disco by the books. We have a high view of disco because it combines electronic, classical music, and pop music. It's very romantic, baroque, and danceable. We're getting closer to the real reason this album is so good, but we're not quite there yet. This album has many more incredible songs on it, like The Party, DVNO, Stress, which is the most appropriately named song in the history of music. That song also uses an iLife sample, Suspense Accents number six. I'm not even gonna play the song Stress because it's gonna stress you out, but imagine that chopped up with more stressful layers added on top. It's crazy. That gives way to the song Waters of Nazareth, which is the song that started it all. This was the first single Justice made for this album, which was released in 2005, before the album in 2007. This is also where all the religious imagery came from. There's an organ sound on this song, which made them think of church, so they named it Waters of Nazareth, and it just so happens that the name Justice, the middle letter is T, so that became a cross, and then the concept of the album came together. Well, loose concept. I mean, sure, you got Genesis, Let There Be Light, and Waters of Nazareth, but the band has said they didn't intend for any deeper meaning. Like classical music, I have my own sort of visual interpretation of what's happening in the music. I hear all kinds of themes of transitioning from analog to digital throughout the album, but that's my own interpretation. The album closes out with One Minute to Midnight, which incorporates everything we've been through with this album. We got dancey drums, killer bass lines, insane compression, distortion, and counter melodies throughout. But here's the thing, none of those things are what make this album so incredible. Yes, the microsampling is insane. Yes, chops on songs like New Jack are crazy. Yes, the sound of the bass or the strings or how insanely compressed everything is. Sure, sure, but take all of that away. That's just a container. Take away the insane slap bass. Take away the Godzilla intro from the beginning of the album. Yes, this album sounds amazing, but that's not what makes it so good. Not at its core. It was made on GarageBand and Cubase, which is crazy, but here's why the album is so incredible. Deep down, before anything else, this is just good music. The chords, the melodies, the counter melodies, the bass lines, how everything plays off of everything else. That's the water, let's say. Sure, let's call it the water of Nazareth. You could change the instrumentation entirely, the container that that water is in. Make Valentine a classical piano piece, and it would be a great classical piano piece. You could produce Waters of Nazareth differently to make it pure disco, and it would be a great disco song. The container of this album is fantastic. The sounds on the album, whether it's distortion or compression or soaring strings or hard hitting drums, whatever, it's all so good. But what's inside of that container, the water itself, that's why this album has aged like a fine wine. You see what I just did? Turned water into wine? Come on. Another major influence on this album is Daft Punk. Obviously. Did I not mention that Justice is French? Just like Daft Punk, who definitely paved the way for Justice. In a lot of ways, Cross sounds like an evolution of Daft Punk, but Daft Punk themselves would, on their final album, go a different direction. One that is unique in its own right and resulted in the album Random Access Memories. But that story, uh, that's right here. Click here to watch it. <laughs> 